Good morning once again. It's great to be able to share with you, even if it's in a rather a clinical environment. I've been enjoying preaching again over the last while, but now that we're back in lockdown level four, we have to do it this way again. But it's great to be able to be with you and great to share with you. Well, today we're going to be having a look at the Battle of Jericho. Now, last week we looked at the story of Joshua and the Israelites crossing the Jordan River. And I think we learned some very pertinent lessons as we stand looking over at our promised land across oftentimes very threatening and impossible rivers. We learned that God is still God of the impossible today. He is able to do anything and everything, uh, even where it seems quite impossible. Anyway, today we come to Jericho. The people of Israel had now crossed over the Jordan into the land of Canaan. It was their land of milk and honey that God had promised to Abraham about 500 years earlier. The first obstacle they faced was the city of Jericho, an un unconquerable walled city. Let's read the story. If you've got your Bibles, follow along with me. I'm going to be reading selected passages as we go down. Joshua chapter 6, first from verse 1 to 5. Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king, kings and its king, I beg your pardon, and fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast in the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up, every man straight in. Let's go down to verse 17. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. Verse 19, all the silver and gold and articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. The Israelites obeyed and did exactly as God commanded. Then in verse 20 we read, When the trumpet sounded, the people shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the people gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So every man charged straight in, and they took the city. Verse 24, they burned the whole city and everything in it, but they put the silver and gold and articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute with her family and all who belonged to her because she had hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho and she lives among the Israelites to this day. Well, excavations there at Jericho reveal that its fortifications featured a stone wall about four meters wide and perhaps five meters high. At its top was a smooth stone slope where it joined massive stone walls that towered even higher, so it was virtually impregnable. Now, in ancient warfare, such cities were either taken by assault or surrounded, and the people starved into submission. Its invaders might try to weaken the stone walls with fire or even by tunneling, or they might simply heap up a mountain of earth to serve as a ramp in order to access the city. But each of these methods of assault took months or, or certainly weeks at best. And the attacking force usually lost severely uh, people as they tried to access the city. But for Jericho, it fell in only seven days. As an interesting side here, Jericho is the second most excavated city in the land of Israel, second only to uh, Jerusalem. Amazingly, 
Most archaeologists agree on these conclusions. Number one, the city was destroyed suddenly, and many say probably by an earthquake. They say also that the city was burned after it was destroyed. And they also say the city was destroyed in late spring after harvest, which would certainly tie up with the flood of the Jordan River. Now, though it seemed foolish, Joshua followed God's instructions to the letter. Though militarily it was irrational to assault Jericho in the manner it was done, it just seemed like crazy, and yet he chose to do what God told him to do. The Apostle Paul assures us in Romans 15.4, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. So let's see what hope we can learn from Jericho, some lessons from Jericho this morning. Number one, let's put God first. Put God first. Jericho was the very first city that Israel encountered and God required of them that they devote the city and its entirety to him. The gold and the silver was to go into the treasury of the Lord and nothing else was to be kept for their own purposes. Jericho was in essence the tithe, the first fruits. By not taking the spoils of battle for themselves but by giving it to God, God's teaching them that he needs to be first in their lives. So how do you match up with what God has given you? Are you faithful in the giving of your first fruits? Do you consider God before you consider anything else? You know, and the scriptures give us specific and practical ways to do that. Proverbs 3 verse 9, for example, says, Honor the Lord with your wealth with the first fruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Before you do anything else, honor the Lord. And by bringing that first fruits, you are bringing honor to Him. We cannot escape this order or the implication thereof. Whether you believe in tithing or not, this principle stands Honor the Lord with your first fruits. Now it's true that God doesn't need anything from human hands. Not money, not time, not service, nothing. But friends, when we do bring those things, we bring Him honor. In Jericho, we see this principle being established in what was to come in the rest of Israel's exploits. God first, then we worry about everything else. So lesson number one, make sure God comes first. Lesson number two this morning is that faithful obedience overcomes obstacles. Faithful obedience overcomes obstacles. Jericho was impenetrable and the military strategy that God gives Joshua is nothing short of ludicrous and against any military wisdom of that day or this day. But what may have seemed foolish to Joshua and everyone else brought great victory because of their faithful obedience. Now, living under the new covenant, we know that our covenant is driven by faith and not gaining by obeying, which is why I say faithful obedience overcomes an obstacle. Joshua obviously obeyed God. But it must have taken an enormous amount of faith to do so. We do indeed live by faith and not by sight. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And we know that without faith it is impossible to please God. But simply put, apply your faith to what He has said and walk in simple obedience. Just imagine these guys walking around the walls for six days in silence as they followed the trumpeters. What were they thinking? They were probably thinking, what was General Joshua thinking? In Joshua 6 verse 10, the Bible records, Joshua had commanded the people, do not give a war cry, 
Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. So for six days they walked around in silence. And on the seventh day they walked around six times in silence. And only then on the seventh day we find the order coming. Joshua 6 verse 16 says, The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And in verse 20 it says, When the trumpet sounded, the people shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the people gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So every man charged straight in, and took the city. Isn't that amazing? A total of 13 times they walked around, 12 times in silence, and finally on the 13th, at the right moment, they were given the command, and they shouted, and the miracle of the walls collapsed. Maybe that's where the number 13 comes from. It was lucky for some and unlucky for others. Anyway, if we truly believe God, our desire will be to faithfully obey His commandments. Our obedience is, after all, the evidence of our faith, according to James 2.26, which says, As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Friends, your Jericho victories will be won by applying your faith and obeying uh, what He has commanded. And the last little lesson for this morning is that we can learn is that we need to let our word count. We need to let what we say count. I couldn't help but think of this woman, Rahab, who was spared together with her family members in her home. I mean, just picture the scene. Imagine the absolute chaos when the walls fell after that massive shout had gone up. And the Israelite fighting men poured into the city. There was dust everywhere, chaos, confusion, screams of terror, lots of blood and gore. And in the midst of this, Rahab and her team are kept safe. Joshua 6, and 23 records, Joshua said to the two women who had spied out the land, Go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So the young men who had done the spying went in and brought out Rahab, her father and mother and brothers and all who belonged to her. They brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. Interestingly, as a side note, there is an excavated portion of Jericho where one of the walls was intact or a portion of the wall was intact. Perhaps... Uh, and maybe, obviously, the bit where Rahab lived. Here is a woman who had ruined her life with sin. She had, due to circumstances or other factors, chosen a life of selling her body. When she met the spies, she decided to put her faith in the true and the living God. Another interesting side, Jewish tradition says that she actually married one of the two spies that she had hidden. Three times in the New Testament, we are reminded of Rahab's faith and God's loving kindness. She became the great, great, great grandmother of King David and is traced as an ancestor to Jesus through his adoptive father, Joseph. But this is my point. The spies had told her she would be safe. And in spite of the severe circumstances and tumult at the time, they kept their word to this woman. They could easily have forgotten her due to her station in life, due to the extreme circumstances at hand, but they didn't. Under General Joshua's command, they were whisked away to safety because of her act of kindness and faith in the living God. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 33, Jesus says the following. Chapter 5, verse 33 to 37. Jesus says again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, Do not break your oath, but keep the oaths you have made to the Lord. But I tell you, <laughs> I love it when Jesus says, But I tell you, 
Here comes something more important. He says, Do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. Simply, he says in verse 37, let your yes be yes and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. In other words, friends, there's no room for us making these promises that we so often make. If your yes is yes, it's yes. If your no, if you say no, it's no. Unlike Many people today, many parents today, let's use that as a simple example. Uh, mommy tells Paul, don't do that or I'm going to give you a clout. And Paul does it. And mommy says, Paul, I told you, stop doing that now or I'm going to give you a hiding. And Paul keeps doing it. And mommy says, Paul, I'm telling you again, if you don't stop that now, I'm going to give you a hiding. And Paul, by this stage, has worked out that mom's word actually doesn't count. <laughs> so eventually, mom is begging, oh, please, Paul, if you will stop doing that, then I'll buy you an ice cream. What rubbish. Fortunately, I, I had a mother who only gave me one warning. <laughs> stop that. And if I didn't stop it, then I felt the consequences of that. So I was taught at a young age, yes is yes and no is no. Why can't we just say something and be believed. Why do we have to say, oh, I promise you I'll do this, or oh, I promise you. You don't need to promise. Why is your word not your word? Jesus said, don't do that oath stuff anymore. Just simply let your yes be yes and your no be no. We spend too much listening to and believing the, the political leaders and the Hollywood stars and all the rest of it who flip-flop from one day to the next to to justify their actions or keep their positions of power and prestige or whatever it might be. Not good examples for any of us. But friends, Jericho reminds me today that our word is more important and it should be kept. Proverbs chapter 6, 2 to 5 says, If you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth, this is how important it is. Then do this, my son, to free yourself, since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands. By, by um, yes becoming no and no becoming yes, things are so bad that we've actually been ensnared and we've fallen into captivity, is what the scriptures say. And then it advises us, go and humble yourself. Press your plea with your neighbor. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. So serious is it when we say something and not do it. So serious is we say we're not going to do it and then we do it. Uh, just let your yes be yes and your no be no. And you know what, parents, I want to encourage you this morning. It's not too late to start. It's not too late to change. Go free yourself. Press plea with your neighbor. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle, like a bird. Uh, and let your yes be yes. So mean what you say and say what you mean. Let's conclude this morning. This wonderful, wonderful, incredible story from Jericho. What has it taught us? Lesson number one. Put God first. And I want to ask you this morning, are you honoring God with your wealth, with the first fruits of your wealth? Do you bring him honor by doing the right thing? Or are you amongst the many people that tip God or give him the leftovers? Do you genuinely, every single time you come across Jericho, every time your paycheck comes, every time you have another victory in your life, do you honor God with the first fruits of your wealth? Are you bringing him honor? Jericho teaches us to put God first. Secondly, Jericho teaches us that faithful obedience overcomes obstacles. We need to walk in faith. We need to live by faith. And to demonstrate that, we walk in obedience. 
of his, in his commands. That which he has said, just do it, but believe it. And number three this morning, Jericho has taught us that we need to let our word count. Would you start that today? Stop this. I promise you, I'm going to do this. I promise you, I'll do that. I prom- Just leave that. That's not New Testament uh, theology. That belongs to the past. We don't make oaths. We don't do that thing. No matter how many promises God has made, though, yes, in Christ and so through us, the amen is spoken by, to, you know, by us to the glory of God. So we don't need to make those promises. God has secured them all in the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to simply let our yes be yes and our no be no. Amen. Father, thank you for these brief lessons we've been able to share together this morning. And Lord, even as we pause in the midst of this new lockdown, we pray for encouragement. We pray for provision. We pray, Lord, for perseverance. We pray for everything that everyone possibly needs. Uh, I'm thinking of those who are mentally um, struggling through this new series of lockdowns. Lord, that you would allow them that They would come to know you (laughs) so real and so personally that they would uh, fly through this, not not being bound under the circumstances, but being seated with you uh, in the heavenly realms far above all of these things that so trouble us. So comfort us, I pray. Strengthen us, I pray. Thank you for the courage that you place in our hearts. And thank you, Lord, this morning for the lessons from Jericho. We bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining with us this morning. And once again, next Sunday, God willing, we'll be meeting again in this format and not live. And hopefully, God willing, the week after that, we'll be back together in church again. Bye-bye.